Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Joni Stahl. Once again, it's good to be back. I thought I'd pop in for a few minutes because I wanted to say a few things to you guys today to keep you on the rail, to keep you uh, on the fairway, and to keep you in the midst of the paths of judgment, keeping the paths of righteousness. And so I was very compelled today to make this video. And uh, it was kind of a wait and see kind of a thing. You know, I, I mean, what I'm trying to say is I didn't plan on making this video. I'm thinking I'm colliding two things at once. I'm talking about what happened on the 20th. I'm talking about false prophecies. I'm talking about the danger of false prophecies and how powerful they are. But I also want to talk about a greater power than false prophets and false prophecies. Because you see, they're always going to be there. So that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. Before I do that, I'm going to honor Jesus Christ. Because this little green pasture is his. I'm just his little earthen vessel. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask him to be with us this day or night, depending on when you listen to this. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I thank you, O oh great and mighty God. And I want to exalt your greatness and your mightiness in this prayer. Lord, I want to declare your righteousness and your truth. Lord, as far as this YouTube video, that your wings will take it. That, Lord, that we would be a people that cleave to you. That, Lord, that are filled with your Holy Spirit, who was the witness of your truth. That, Lord, that we would no more be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine but that we would be quickened by your Holy Spirit, that in an instant, that Lord, even if we hear something that kind of slightly touches us, that Lord, all of us will not shoo that away, but that Lord, that we would be sensitive to the detection of your Holy Spirit in us. Lord, I thank you that you are that great, and lofty with a high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, but that Lord, you visit those who are lowly and of a contrite heart and spirit. I thank you for this little YouTube channel, this little green pasture. I thank you. I do not despise the small things. I love the small things. I love it, Lord, the things that are not the base things. So, Jesus, I pray you will be glorified and that this message, Lord, would speak to the ears of those that need to hear it and that the seeds of this message would fall into the prepared soils of hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let me get rid of this pop-up. Thank you. So... Like you, I sat and I listened for years to these great and lofty prophecies from little people to big, great ministers of the New Apostolic Reformation, the NAR community. Their own private special prophets that they look to for a word People who, even smaller people, Lord God, who don't have big ministries that are saying, that were posting little videos of themselves saying, I had a dream and I know, I, I know the voice of God and this is what Jesus told me that would happen. What would happen? Well, we clearly saw what didn't happen on the 20th and even right up to that day. Man, the stuff I was hearing was nothing but a bunch of hogwash. And it's hogwash because 
the people that were behind it, nobody ever knows. In social media, and I'm out of social media, I have nothing to do with social media, but people send me stuff all the time. They like to keep me apprised, which I thank you. If you send me things and you, because I'm not on social media, um, but if you send me things, I do appreciate it to keep me apprised. But the things I was seeing were such ridiculous stuff where I was like, well, who said that? Well, I don't know, but this is what everybody's saying. It's like, well, who's everybody? And where's who's its source? Because the whole thing centered around somebody giving false prophecies or multiple people giving false prophecies. And what has happened is false prophecies have taken the place of solid Bible doctrine. So what the enemy has done is he has his, he's created his own Christian community and they have an appearance of power or he knows how to inject by lying spirits into smaller people, the littler people. And they seem to be real dreams. And believe me, and I have told you before, I have had dreams I thought were of the Lord. And then I've told people it was of the Lord. And then I realized I was wrong. And at least I confessed it. And I would rather be clean. And boy, did that teach me a lesson just to be careful about things that we I dream, things I think I'm hearing. You know, I used to be more, you know, open with uh, maybe giving a word and stuff, but man, I've pulled my anchors in from that, you know, and my boat sailed on from there because, um, and, I, and, and I'm going to talk about real prophecy, okay? Because I'm going to talk about one end of it and I'm going to touch upon the other. See, the enemy is brilliant. He knows the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He knows what the masses are looking for. They want a quickie. They want power. They want to feel. They want to sense. They want to touch. They want to taste. They want to handle. But they don't want to do it in the spiritual, where they want to do it the old-fashioned way, where they wait on the Lord. They have a committed prayer life. They're not waiting to feel something. Um, if anything, uh, people who stay in the Word, they stay in prophecy. And, and, you know, they, they study prophecy. But they do it intelligently. They're not all over the place with it. They're not. They're not isolating scripture, and that's what a lot of people do. They will. It's it's scripture isolation, and I know there's a word for it, but I'm not going to use it because I don't want to make this some big theological, multi-syllable worded uh, description. But it really, really, ha Satan has grown his own congregation. And it gives them a sense and feeling of power to say, oh, I saw this, I heard this, and I went into the heavens, and I have access into the heavens by prayer. And every day their false prophets have some new word from the Lord. I don't believe a bit of it. I think it's all, I think they're all being oppressed by lying spirits. Now, when Trump was not inaugurated and he flew off into the sunset, that ended it. And there is this deafening silence from people who said, I don't care. I'm standing on it. This is my position. I know the voice of God. And this is what he told me. I don't care what it looks like. Well, it's pretty quiet out there right now. And I want to talk about a couple of things attached to this. You know, in Malachi 3, 6, God says of himself, I am, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you know, his not changing, it's not just being, it's not a, con a concept, it's not, not being consumed, it doesn't just mean you're not consumed by your neighboring enemies that want to kill you off if, along with your wife and children and your cattle because people can be consumed by anything and i saw for the last four years christian nationalism gone crazy and even people of their own household watched them change they became a new breed of christian a violent kind of so-called christian 
where they were throwing everything on what prophecies were being said and twisted doctrines. And they were isolating scriptures and saying, the Lord led me to this word and therefore he told me Trump will be president. But he's not president anymore. There's another person sitting in office. You know, God does not change. You know what that says to me? If God doesn't change, then I want to cleave to the one that doesn't. You want to cleave to the rock of all ages. Because you see, kingdoms will come and kingdoms will go. Read your Bibles. Where are those kingdoms today? Governments rise, governments fall. People die. Their breath is taken away, God says, I taketh away their breath, and then I renew the face of the earth. And so what has happened is people wanted so bad to have a savior for this nation. And the whole time, they fought like wild animals. They, and I think about like what Lamentations chapter four says, our eyes failed us. While we waited all day for a nation, we thought that can save us. And in the book of, if you know what the book of Lamentations is, it's a book of lamenting, mourning, grief, woe. Jeremiah wrote that after the entire nation went into captivity. And that's what he heard them saying. We, our eyes failed us while we waited all day for a nation we thought could save us. Where are your eyes looking at? Look at look at the eyes of all these people. Even innocent people fell for it. So if the Lord says, and he does say, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know, when you stick to Christ and you stay committed in the word, nothing's going to consume you. You're not going to fall for every wind of doctrine. You're not going to fall for every time somebody goes, oh, the Lord gave me a word. The Lord gave me a word. And I want to inject this right at this point. I fully believe that God does speak in dreams. He does say that. He says, I. it says it, I believe, in Numbers chapter 11, where he says, um, if any man be a prophet, I will speak to him in dreams. And in visions will I make myself known. But God's never wrong. We're wrong. Let God be true and every man a liar. You see, this great boasting, and sometimes I will, I'll, I'll listen to certain ministers on purpose because I go, I want to hear what they're saying. And they're making these great boasts. Um, they're, talk, they're talking in this crazy mystical <clears throat> experiences, <clears throat> which I believe are nothing more <clears throat> than demonic lies that they are in because, <clears throat> excuse me, if a person gives themselves over, I'm getting a drink of water. One sec. <clears throat> we, people open the door to that. When you, when you start looking at something, that's a false light that started to come in. It says the eye is the light of the body. If thy whole body is full of light, if thy eye is single, then thy whole body shall be full of light, having no part dark. You know, Satan just needs you to crack the door a little bit. He doesn't care if you're innocent. You may go, because see, he's an enticer. He knows humanity loves to feel power. This external, um, you know, screaming, crying, getting crazy. I'm not saying there isn't a time for that. I warfare when I need to, and if it needs to get loud. It's going to be because the Holy Spirit is in me and it's becoming more powerful. But the point I'm making is, is that there are these false prophets and all of their four year long. This is what he told me. This is what's happening. This is what's going down. <clears throat> and then they get into detailed prophecies and they have these conversations with God. They're going back and forth. And then he said, I'm making up a name. Yeah, Bill, this is what I'm going to do. And I said, what do you mean, God? Yes, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to strike this city. And then what's going to happen when that happens? 
Well, then as soon as I'm done, I'm going to step back a minute. I'm going to give my people time to regroup. Um, there is one person who gives continuous false doctrines. I'm not going to name his name. Um, most people know who he is. And he was scrambling the other day. And he was saying to everybody, well, the Lord spoke to me and said, I would have allowed Donald Trump to stay in office, but it's my people. They didn't obey the word that you told them. And they, and it was something to the effect that they didn't pray enough. They didn't believe me enough. And now basically the blood is on our hands. And I was like, okay, I have heard enough. I want to read something to you. It's in Acts chapter five. Acts chapter 5, in this part, this is when some of the apostles were thrown into prison and the angel of the Lord entered in, opened the gates, tell them to go, get out there, start preaching again. They went out to the temple. Uh, the guards were called in by the chief priests. Where are they? And they were not in their prisons. They were found in the morning preaching the word of God. And so they were angry. It says here in verse now uh, 24. Now when the chief when now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Keep that in your mind. Whereunto this would grow. The gospel. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye would not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and, to for and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one the, in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to nothing. They were brought to naught. They were brought to nothing. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished and all, even as many obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it lest happily you be found even to fight against God. You know, I thought about this while I was getting ready to do this video. It just came into my mind, and I'll give credit to the Holy Spirit. Look, there's always going to be somebody boasting of themselves to be some great one, like Simon Magus, who bewitched the whole city. There's going to be boasters, big name men and women in expensive suits and big buildings and lights, camera, action, and they have their followers like Theudas and, and Judas. But I believe the words that Gamaliel said, he's like, let them alone. Have nothing, you know, it's, it's really let the blind lead the blind. Because really, whatever they really are, it's going to come to naught. Just like it came to naught 
on the 20th. And oh, yes, they're regrouping. Oh, yes, they're regrouping. Well, now the Lord's saying to me, you know, that Jesus, uh, he's saying to me that, you know, 45 is coming back in 2024 and this and that. It's like, look at how politicized Christianity has warped and perverted their ability anymore to see the Lord. All they, and they, they have exchanged prophecy, prophesying for the gospel. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know, in John 5, 36, uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees about John the Baptist and about how he was a, a light that came into the world, but that there was a, here, let's start here. It says, if I bear witness of myself, verse 31 of 5 of the book of John, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. You sent unto John, and you bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. But these things say I that you might be saved. He was a burning light and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. You know, when Jesus was 12 years old, he was found in the temple by his parents who were looking for him for three days, and they found him, and they they were upset and they were like, where have you been? We've been looking for you for three days, sorrowing. And he says, know you not that I must be about my father's business? Yeah, he was premature. But you know what? He knew what he had to do and he stuck to it. You see that Jesus never got involved with Herod. He didn't get involved with Pontius Pilate. The only reason why Jesus got involved with the governor is because his own people said, we want him judged by you, the Roman government. You know, when Jesus says, I have a greater witness than that of John, you see, you and I can bear witness. I'm not bear witness. We can speak with that light that God has given us. And that Holy Spirit of God will bear witness in us to other people. But Jesus, his presence and his glory found nowhere else than in here. When you stick to this and you stay in it because you have dug your, you have <laughs> put your, drew a line in the sand, I'll say, and you stick to it, you're going to be unchangeable just like God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Look at everybody right now that's consumed. They're consumed with politics. They're consumed. You know what I saw today? And it was comforting. I saw this in Psalm today and I said, yeah, that is really good, Lord. And he said in his word, in verse 12, chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Look, there's always going to be wicked rulers. And if God overruled all of this, or we're standing on this, we're standing on that, maybe God is trying to teach the American Christians a lesson. Maybe he's trying to say, you guys, everybody was trying to control an outcome. You wanted an outcome for yourself. And yes, I get it. I see exactly what's going on and who's sitting in that Oval Office now. 
But I'll tell you one thing right now, heaven and earth will pass away. I want to say this to you. I saw something J.C. Ryle said, and I thought, I'm going to remember that. He said, spend your time in nothing else except that which will comfort you in the end. Because you see, all of this that this nat Christian nationalism is demanding, it's all interwoven with some kind of another gospel, another spirit, a different spirit that we didn't receive, and another Jesus, a political Jesus, a Jesus that you pull the strings and you tell him, oh, we're all prophets. I heard from prophet, and I know he hears from the Lord, and I'm coming to you now, God, and I'm saying in the name of the Lord, and they do all this declaring and this decreeing, and they, they're kingdom dominionists. They believe that they have kingdom dominion. It's called kingdom now. But there's no kingdom right now. This kingdom is still yet to come. The kingdom of God is within you by a born again experience. The kingdom of heaven is the millennial reign. Kingdom on earth. Just be careful. Be about your father's business. Cleave to the one who changes not. Because when everything else is changing around you, you're not going to be changed. And the longer and this nearer and the more you cleave to the Lord, all those prowling demons prowling around you, seeing who they may devour to consume you. See, Satan's prowling demons aren't just so they afflict you with a disease or get you to lie or oppress you. They get you to believe. They, they entice you. They seduce you. They get you to believe something that's so smooth, a smooth prophet, prophecy. But the words that I've read, they don't say the same things everybody else is saying. Jesus Christ says, I'm coming again, and it's going to keep getting worse and worse. It says in Psalm 102, 26, the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish. They shall perish like a vesture. Thou shalt change them and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Don't cleave to a man. Don't cleave to a government. If you truly are born again, cleave to Christ, the rock of ages. Stay on the fairway. Stay in the midst of the paths of judgment. Cleave to the unchangeable God. And while a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, it won't come near you. It won't. You know why? Because David said, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. No evil, no evil plague will come nigh thy dwelling. He said, we won't even feel any evil thing. But you have to make him that. And it's not a Jesus after our own well, I love the Lord because I believe he loves this United States. This United States is so steeped in the curse of hell. This is a filthy world. I'm not going to ask God to bless what's cursed. Jesus said, don't think I came to bring peace. I came, for I came to bring division. There's no ecumenical bone in my body. I'm not going to change. You know why? Because I'm, not, I'm going to cleave to the unchangeable God. So I pray today in Jesus' name that you take your eyes and your ears away from those liars. That's what they are. And I don't have a problem saying it if the shoe fits. Some people might say, well, Joan, that's a harsh word. Well, Jesus called them a brood of vipers. Twice the sons of hell. He had his words. And he was the son of God. And I say that because no lie is of the truth. Remember, Satan needs 99% of the pure word of God to float one lie. So anyway, that's all I have to say to you guys today. Keep in the midst of the paths of judgment. Be about your father's business until the very day he takes you off of this earth and into glory. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week on Monday. God bless you and have a beautiful day. Shalom.